when you bring up Washington, D.C. today, most people think of the White House and politics. But D.C. has a dark side. In the 1980s and the 1990s, Washington, D.C. was full of drug dealers and killers. And at one point was even nicknamed the murder capital. Today, we will take a look at one of Washington, D.C.'s most notorious killers, Wayne Perry. Wayne Perry was born on November the 14th. 1962. He was raised by his mom in Washington, D.C. Wayne started his life of crime early in life. At the age of 12, he was cheating gamblers with rigged dice and marked cards. He would also tag along with local gangs on their robbery operations and even helped in several bank robberies. From a young age, Wayne also loved guns and didn't think twice about shooting anyone that got in his way. While committing crimes, Wayne would also attend school, and he was a pretty decent student. He was also said to be a very talented basketball player. However, while trying to balance his street life and his academic career, the streets ultimately took over his life. At the age of 17, Wayne was expelled from high school Wilson High School. He was also not allowed to attend any local schools in the Washington, D.C. area. His mother tried to enroll him in other schools on the outskirts of Washington, D.C., in Maryland and Virginia, but Wayne had given up on his academic career and became fully invested in the streets. Wayne became a full-time stick-up kid and would rob anyone he felt had money. Wayne was making a lot of money in the streets for a couple of years until the age of 22. At 22, Wayne got into a fight with a local gang and ended up killing one of the members. He was caught by the police and convicted of manslaughter and had to serve several years in prison. While in prison, instead of trying to figure out a way to escape his life of crime, Wayne was networking with other criminals and learning from other inmates on how to become a more successful criminal. Wayne got out in the mid 80s while he was in his late 20s and began his second wave of terror on the streets of D.C. With the new knowledge he acquired in prison, Wayne was more dangerous than ever before. Wayne put together a small group of hitmen to help him commit his crimes. But Wayne was never afraid to get his hands dirty. With the help of his team, Wayne continued to rob and murder anyone who got in his way. Wayne was known for walking up on people in broad daylight and committing his crimes barefaced. If you didn't do exactly what Wayne asked you to do, he would kill you on sight. Wayne also expanded his criminal enterprise through the use of extortion. He extorted mobsters, lawyers, and even drug dealers all throughout the Washington, D.C. and surrounding areas. Wayne was building up quite the reputation for himself and had the streets of D.C. in complete fear. The police would question the local D.C. residents, but no one would dare say Wayne's name. Everyone was afraid that they would end up dead or one of their relatives would end up dead. Everybody knew Wayne and Wayne seemed to know everyone as well. After several years of running D.C., Wayne met a New York drug dealer by the name of Alpo Martinez. In 1989, Alpo came to Washington, D.C. to expand his drug empire, but he knew he couldn't do it alone. Alpo heard of how ruthless a killer Wayne Perry was, so he offered Wayne a deal. 
Alpo asked Wayne if he could be his personal bodyguard and hitman. And in exchange, he would pay him in money and drugs. Wayne Perry accepted Alpo's offer, and together they began to take over Washington, D.C., block by block. Wayne and Alpo were an unstoppable force and evaded the police for many years. Alpo made over $60 million moving drugs in the streets of D.C. It is also estimated that Wayne committed over eight hits on behalf of Alpo, one of the hits even being one of Alpo's former girlfriends. Despite their years of success, eventually the law caught up with Alpo and Wayne. Alpo was the first to get caught. Alpo was arrested in November 1991 and charged with multiple drug charges and 15 counts of murder. In an effort to evade the death penalty or life imprisonment, Alpo agreed to work with the police and told officers everyone that helped him commit his crimes. Alpo snitched on Wayne Perry. Wayne evaded police for a while, but eventually he was caught in 1993. Wayne was charged with kidnapping, racketeering, robbery, first degree murder, and conspiracy to distribute crack cocaine. Despite all his charges, Wayne was able to avoid the death penalty through a plea deal. Wayne pled guilty and was sentenced to five life and prison sentences without the option of parole in April of 1994. Wayne is currently incarcerated at the ADX Florence Federal Supermax Prison in Fairmount County, Colorado. He has spent 18 years there and will remain there for the rest of his life. During an interview with a reporter, Wayne has stated that he has killed more than 100 people during his life of crime. If you enjoyed our video, please like, comment, and subscribe below. Thank you.